I then asked Ian how he went about filling the sprayer to minimise spillage as well as dealing with foaming and rinsing of used containers. The first thing about filling the sprayer is just, for me, is the simple things. So, for example, knowing the areas that you're doing before you even start, making sure that you've got a good record, so that's GPS area. The other thing to bear in mind is GPS area could potentially be slightly different to the field area. So it's knowing, and I keep a database of what I've got so that I can load up accordingly. And I've got a pony flow on my inlet to my tank, so I can accurately measure what I'm putting in, but remembering to take off what chemical you're adding because that's going to affect the grand total. One of the things to prevent a spill is you don't know it's going to do it until it's done it, so it's, you're too late. I've got a 200 litre drum which I've cut about 18 inches deep, which every time I come in, I put underneath my overflow pipe on the sprayer. So if I do have an overflow, it's contained straight away. I can then deal with it rather than having to clean something up and tidy up afterwards. The other thing I do is I've got a drip trace that I put underneath the induction hopper, again reducing any point source contamination. So on the side of the sprayer I've got an AIC sticker which shows the formulations and then the mix order for those formulations. So I lay the products out in that order. Also then cross-referencing that to a piece of paper that I've already written out which I stick to the side of the sprayer so that I know I'm doing it right. So depending on the cans is whether I need to use dilute pesticide to rinse the cans or whether I can get it all in while inducting clean water only. How do you know whether you're going to be able to put all the chemical in while you're filling the sprayer with water or you'll have to stop midway the filling process and then add the rest of the cans before adding the rest of the water? A lot of it is experience and then depending on the number of cans because it takes the same amount of time to open, in effect, and pour a one litre, a five litre, a ten litre can. The process of opening the cans is the same regardless of the can size. So it's knowing what you, what you can get in, in the time. Um, preparation is key, as always. So knowing it, and then what I'll do is I'll start loading. I, it's usually about 15 to 20 cans that I can get in in that time frame. Um, if I can't, I'll then stop when I'm half full. I'll then rinse the cans with dilute pesticide and then finish off rinsing all the cans with clear water. What's your recommendation for pouring without splashing? To prevent foaming, you don't want any air being taken through the induction hopper. So I usually have the induction bowl about a third full of water and then as I pour the cans, it's a bit like an orange juice container indoors. don't want any glugging, so crop protection products, what I tend to do is hold on their side and pour so that the, there's no glugging. I also don't pour it into the actual liquid that's in the induction bowl. I pour it onto the side where the rinse is taking it in. I find that reduces any splash that you could potentially get, so reducing operator exposure or splashes out onto the ground point source contamination. What are the potential contamination issues when opening bottles? It starts off as soon as you open the lid. So I've got a, a range of can spanners to help me undo that. You can pick them up from all the, all the chemical manufacturers will provide them for you if you ask them. They're very helpful in that situation. Um, also got a pair of pipe wrenches, which sometimes you, you need because there may be an odd size can that you can't open. Then the next part is you get the can open and I must admit I'm usually quite happy when I have a can without foils because that's one less thing I have to do. Sometimes when you take the lid off because of the process of sealing the can the glue on the cardboard inside the lid has stuck the cardboard insert to the top of the foil so that's another thing you have to try and do and then again then you have to open the foil. The best way I found for doing the foil is I've got a, a can spanner which I've removed a tooth from. So I turn it like a Formula One wheel nut. You only need to turn it a small, like five degrees, and it then tears the foil. But I've removed a tooth so that it doesn't take the foil off completely. Then I can then pinch it and lift it out without contaminating my hands. And then as I pour, the foil then 
opens out and then as the product comes out, it rinses the foil. Then when I put it on the can washer, as the products are washing out and the rinse water's coming out, it cleans the foil. I can then move the foil because it's clean, which I then put in a double bag, which then gets taken away by a licensed waste contract disposer. Top tip I picked up from George Sargent, Farm Spray Operator winner, is three 10 second rinses is a lot better than one 30 second rinse. So as well as having a range of can spanners in my induction hopper and the measuring jugs, I have a washing up brush which I use every time I've filled up just to have a good clean round the induction bowl to make sure it's nice and clean. Cleanliness is paramount when using crop protection products. It's important to have no residue left that could damage following crops. Ian's techniques are sound for manual filling, so I asked John to talk through his automated approach. This one here is equipped with an electronic sight gauge, so there's no visual sight gauge in the sprayer, it's all done electronically, which initially I thought, after having, always having a sprayer where you've got a visual sight gauge, and you know a visual sight gauge is never going to go wrong, I was a bit sceptical, but this one does work really well. And that's used in conjunction with the fact that it won't let itself overfill. So what we can do on this one, I think nearly all modern sprayers are the same sort of philosophy. You dial in how many litres a hectare you want to put in and how many hectares you want to put in. And then we hit the button, enter, and it tells me I want 3,800 litres of liquid. So what we can be doing is we can put, say, 1,000 litres in. We can bring that down to 1,000 litres if we want. And then we can put 1,000 litres of water in, stop it, and then we can go on to fill in, put all our chemicals in we need, and then we can go back to the 3,800 litres, and then it'll take that, take that quantity in, and it won't do any more than that. If we fill correctly, we will minimise the risk of any surplus air getting into the liquid, which is what causes frothing. So a frothing can be either a leaky pipe sucking in air, or if on the induction hopper, if we're sucking liquid out of the induction hopper quicker than it's coming in, we're going to be sucking air in, and that's what's going to create bubbling in the tank. So you want to minimise the chance of that happening. If you did have a foaming up problem, how do you cope with it? First thing you're going to do is stop. Stop taking anything in, stop mixing it around. Because all, all the frothing is, is air in a liquid. So if we stop any liquid movement around or any, in anything, stop bringing any water in, stop moving it around, the bubbles will suppress themselves. We could then put an anti-foaming additive in there, which would take the bubbles out straight away. Alternatively, if that's not there, we could just stop, go away, have a coffee break, come back, uh, and the bubbles will have subsided. But the main thing is, don't panic. Stop everything, stop bringing the water in, stop moving the liquid around, contain what your bubbles have come over the side of the sprayer, then go from there. Something else both Ian and John have been trialling this spray season is a closed transfer system called Easy Connect. The system is now being further developed by Adama, Basef, Corteva, New Farm and Syngenta with pilot plants in the UK and across Europe. Let's hear from John again on how he got on using this new process. This is the first year where we've actually got something that we think is actually workable and it is actually easier now for us to actually swap the caps over and put it through the seal transfer system than it is to actually pour it in through the standard induction hoppers. After you've transferred the chemical through the closed transfer system, what happens to the containers? The system actually puts the top back onto the container. So what we do, we then go back to the induction hopper, knock the top back in, put it on the spinner, give it a final rinse, which gives us our triple rinse in effect then it comes from there onto the draining rack. On the draining rack it tends to just go into a, a container at the end and the amount that goes into the container is very small and we've found we've never yet emptied the container because due to the evaporation is as great as a quantity coming into it over a period of time. Which just goes to show that the closed transfer system is actually getting all my money's worth of chemicals in the sprayer.